Hi again, this is Dr. Bill White, and I'm with the American Orthodontic Society, and I'm going to be talking to you this evening about uh, temporal mandibular joint problems uh, with uh, women. There's probably 80% of the cases that we had were women and about 20% men. Uh, I'm a general dentist and uh, I've been, I've limited my practice to orthodontics about uh, 42 years ago, something like that. And uh, I've been doing temporal mandibular joint work along with a good friend of mine who's passed away now. Uh, and we did uh, temporal mandibular joint work for, uh, I didn't start it as quick as he did, but I've been in it about 30 years. And we had a lot of success treating this type of thing. And uh, his name was uh, Charlie Holt here in, in uh, Bedford. And uh, he did nothing but TMJ work. And he got me tied up in this so that I could take them over after he got them comfortable on the uh, splints and uh, medication or whatever it took to get them comfortable. And then he would bring them to me or send them to me and I would do the orthodontic work on them so that I could set their teeth up in a position that he had determined with his splint therapy where the teeth needed to go. And so I would have to move the teeth around to where they fit, where the jaw was comfortable and the teeth fit together properly at that point. And that's the secret. Uh, one of the big secrets is get the teeth interdigitating and fitting together where the jaw is comfortable. If you can do that, you'll get success in many of these cases. Now, uh, let me get on into this a little further before we uh, cover too much uh, of this, but I want to show you uh, <coughs> several things about it. Now, this is uh, the an anterior positioning splint and this is what he made and later on I got to do it it seemed like everybody in my office had TMJ problems all the ladies there and so we did uh, a lot of splint work on them and others uh, other than what uh, Dr. Holt did but I did his work too uh, he would send them to me to get them off of the splint, back on their teeth in a comfortable position. And we were able to do that uh, to everyone that I can recall. I don't know any of that we weren't able to uh, do this. So that's a pretty darn good record on uh, treating TMJ cases. Uh, now I would have to keep them comfortable while I changed over from the splints to the teeth themselves. And I'll try to explain that in some of these videos. I'm going to try to do uh, several videos on temporal mandibular joint dysfunction and the things we had to do. But we were able to uh, really successfully treat all of these now you don't get rid of the clicks, but we got them out of pain, uh, and uh, many of the clicks uh, left too. But if you got them early enough, you could do that. All right, here is a forward repositioning splint, in which you've got to decide where you're going to have this jaw come up here and meet, and then you make a splint with a ramp on it, so that these lower teeth cannot in any way get on this side 
of this ramp. If they do, when they bite down with that at night, I've had a, I had one patient did that, uh, bit down on the ramp and it pushed the jaw backwards further, and that really hurts, you know. So you've got to make the ramp tall enough and back far enough so that when they close, their teeth are going to hit somewhere along in here and can't ever drop off behind here. It happened that the lady that I, had, I was treating and got her off and she came in. We had her doing fine, everything going real good. And uh, she came in one morning and the office said she was just having all kind of pain. Said during the night it just started hurting terribly on her. And uh, I sat down and listened to her, let her tell me what happened and everything. And sure enough, she said she woke up in the night and her lower teeth were biting on the back half of this ramp. And that shoved the jaw backward even further. And that's what you don't want to do is to crowd up this retrodiscal tissue where the blood vessels and arteries and and nerves and lymph vessels, everything back there in this retrodiscal tissue that produces your uh, synovial fluid, which actually feeds this, the tissue that what we call the disc is made out of. It's a dense connective tissues, no blood vessels, no nerves in it at all. And it takes a tremendous pressure and so it has to be fed and that's the way we'll get into that more and more as we go through these cases like this. So anyway, uh, I've been working with the this temporal mandibular joint uh, material along with the orthodontics. There's just no way that you can separate orthodontics and temporal mandibular joint work and working on people as, as orthodontics is just woven into temporal mandibular joint stuff and you cannot uh, treat these joint patients without doing orthodontics uh, unless you just leave them on splints the rest of their life you see which they don't want to do all right i've got to move on here they've got a lot of slides on this young lady and a lot of history on her uh, anyway this is a forward repositioning splint and we usually we cut some holes in it to let people breathe through there if they have a little breathing problem up in that part of the mouth uh, here is uh, one of the transition things that we use when we take them out of the splint we'll build a just an anterior portion to the splint and then add something on the lower teeth back here uh, except for the second molar but this is an upper uh, splint that you put on kind of where you do away with the main splint and you put put the person closing up here like they were and then you build something on their on their bicuspids and the six-year molar and you leave the second molar free to erupt together that's the way we come out of uh, out of the splits and go into braces and that's the tricky part of it okay that was that splint for her this is this young lady and her facial uh, side profile real nice looking young lady uh, she had a very stressful job too and I found out if in over the years in treating cases and doing orthodontics and temporal mandibular joint stuff you've got to do the temporal mandibular joint correction and get it out of the way before you start in on your orthodontics unless it's sometimes you can do the orthodontics and get the teeth out of the way and just do it and it solves a TMJ problem but most of these cases you're going to have to get the, the big big majority get the temporal mandibular joint thing settled 
and get it going good and then get into your orthodontics but you they would come to me in their splints and they were okay or feeling good he corrected the thing got it settled in the splint and plus he had worked with the the psychological end of the stuff too uh, but sometimes I had to pick up their psychological problems that they would have and everybody's got problems but some people have more than their share of them and they end up with temporal mandibular joint problems anyway from the front boy this young lady is serious now but she's in some serious pain and she's doing a tremendous job uh, working actually for her father and I, I'll just tell you what she did she she ran a dairy for her father and it's milking about 400 cows or I'm not sure how many they were whether it's 400 or 40 or something anyway she milked a lot of cows in the mornings before she went to college and then she would have to milk them in the evening and she was loaded down with care and, and all this stuff. It was just more than she could handle. And her jaw joints uh, gave her trouble. They started giving trouble. Now we could fix it where the jaws could close real comfortable, a comfortable position for the jaws. And she could get along all right but she could not get rid of this problem until she corrected some of this stress that she was under and uh, that was a difficult part of it, of doing this uh, job she got a beautiful smile teeth fine nothing problem and that's the splint again now you can't run around during the daytime with one of those on so you have a choice you can either make a lower splint and put the teeth closing in here where they do in the upper splint and they'll feel comfortable in that position but there's not very much at all other than the inclination in here where the cusp are and stuff like that it keeps this in position in the mouth in other words they can bring their jaw back again with this lower splint in there now a lot of people couldn't get along with the lower ones so they would put the uh, I would make them two upper splints I don't think uh, uh, Charlie ever uh, used the upper splint or maybe he did but I'd cut the ramp down till it's just a very small thing so they could talk and get around with it but they could drop their jaw behind it so they wouldn't want to take a nap with it that split in their mouth they have to put the other one back in there in other words all the time that they could they wore the upper splint with the ramp now if you're working and talking on the telephone and everything you've got to take the blooming thing out though and i've tried wearing them myself and it's it's a problem uh doing that but you just if you get to hurting bad enough and I've had people hurt for years and just put a forward repositioning splint in and talk to them a little bit maybe a lot on how to get rid of some of the stress that they're having or just kind of let them tell me most people will tell you what's wrong with them if you sit and listen to them for a while and this is one problem that uh, doctors today have a problem with is this listening to people let them tell you what's wrong with them they nearly always will give you some indication of what the problem is so just remember that in your treatment of it anyway this is a lower splint that you would wear during the daytime and the teeth don't fit together good until you get them in that position that the upper splint has them in or which we know where the jaw is comfortable 
in the jaw joint back here with the up with the lower splint. Now, this is a thicker splint. I never did like them on that splint. If you make a, an upper splint, I made them usually just about as, as close as you can make them together without the teeth coming through the splints, you see. And then you'd put on the inside, you'd have this ramp coming down and the lower teeth would hit this ramp. It would be coming down in here and it, they'd have to come to this position to get their jaws together. And finally, people get so accustomed to it, they just automatically go to that position. Now, in addition to that, I have had these cases that we wore a forward repositioning splint and then when we would come out of this splint we put a retainer on their re on their teeth it has the same split I mean the same ramp on it on, and some of these cases were bad I mean we had to keep their jaw forward for years after they could get through and we would have a splint that they wore at night and then one in the daytime it might just have a very short their teeth would come up and it'd be a short uh, ramp that it kept the jaw forward just to remind them to keep it there uh, so that's kind of the way you you work around it. now this gets to be complicated orthodontics and most orthodontists don't want to get involved with this but you get involved with it where you like it or not if you're dealing with somebody with some kind of TMJ problem you better learn how to treat it or learn where to send them to that can get it treated so or can do it uh, anyway that's the lower one in place now here's the upper one this is the big ramp on it and this one uh, I believe this is the lower with just almost no ramp on it so in this case we just took all this stuff to how to show it now this young lady uh, when we had her sit down and figure out where to put this jaw where it was most comfortable for her uh, I don't use it the midline doesn't hit on like that but this midline really hits in place here but she brought her jaw forward and you see these teeth don't touch back here in the back of the mouth and, and so in this position she felt comfortable closing and relaxing her mouth so you'd build your ramp on the retainer that would hold this forward and then the ramp would touch uh, the, the acrylic splint I mean would touch the teeth all the way back here and you'd have a ramp that held the jaw in this position and they kept that thing all the time if you possibly could uh, to relieve the pain back here now you can wear this splint the rest of your life if you want to or you can come in and realign these teeth so that the teeth fit together properly in this jaw position and that's what I want you to to learn there now we never use and I didn't either after Charlie passed away uh, I never have used any of these fancy things to relax the jaw I could just take a person after after working with them like that for a while and set them up and you've got to hold your head in a normal position and then just close open and close but don't let your teeth touch or if they touch stop immediately don't put any pressure on them and just open and close your jaw and just try to relax as good as you can and just let your jaw open and close where it wants to close and your jaw will nearly always go to a comfortable place for the jaw to close that means the condyle is in the fossa where it wants to be now if you clench 
especially people who close together and then have a distal slide, they tend to have more trouble than, uh, <coughs> in fact, during the whole time that I've treated these TMJ cases or any kind of orthodontics. If I ever got a person that went to buy it together and their jaw would slide forward two, three, four millimeters, they just almost had no TMJ problem, even though they had stress like other people uh, might have. So anyway, uh, this makes a lot of, lot of difference. How you find them? I don't have to hook all these people up these uh, electronic devices that tell them where their jaw wants to go. I just let the people do that. And we've had complete success with working on these people. You just have to take my word for it. Now, I know that people, we didn't solve all their problems. They have trauma and different things involved in uh, surgery and all kind of things when you get into this. Some of them are actually a little bit off the rocker too that you work with, but you've got to work with all of them. So anyway, here we go down here. This is showing you what's open in there. So we've got to get the teeth together now in this jaw position. And what we did coming out of the splint, uh, we would take this splint out and build an upper kind of retainer just fit inside nothing over these teeth at all but it would have a ramp that held the jaw in the exact the same position that the splint held it in and that was essential in here uh, now now these teeth wouldn't touch back here frequently if you advanced your mandible in here so we covered these teeth, especially to get along in here, we covered them with acrylic. A triad acrylic would put on these teeth and they'd have them closing in this ramp that we have with just the ramp like we showed you in the first of this video. And it held the jaw in this position. And now we will put soft acrylic here and let them close on that not press hard just all just kind of close to and the triad and then you'd heat it or put a light on it and harden it and then take it out and grind the everything off but leave the points where all these teeth touch in there and then leave the last tooth back here open to the last tooth on the bottom and when this tooth got together with the two molars got together and hit, hit and these teeth were hitting on the ramp up here and holding where they should be then we gradually let these teeth come in contact and that's the way we took them out of the splint or off the splint onto braces and set their teeth up and then uh, if we advance the mandible on somebody we left them with a retainer with a ramp on it a day and a night ramp and uh, this gets complicated when you try to do the orthodontics and make these teeth come for further forward and close on the upper teeth it gets really involved you have to learn how to tip the teeth like if you tip the upper teeth back this way that makes the upper teeth go forward so you can do it by tipping and you might take these teeth and tip them backward a little bit make them go backward and now your jaws will meet differently or you could come in here and do a very slight stripping of all the teeth and when you did, you just had a very slight space between all these teeth right here. If you wanted to bring your jaw forward, which is what nearly always you do that, then you close this space in between the upper teeth. You see, you would close it from the back to the front. 
and you close the space on the lower from the front to the back. In other words, you would end up these front teeth being further back and these cusps being slightly further back. And here they would be slightly further forward. And frequently that's all the space you need to get them to a comfortable position like that. So uh, I'm going to try to cover all this stuff in several videos so you can uh, possibly learn this. This is one of the most gratifying things in uh, dentistry, really. And I've had people that come in and they've been hurting for years. I mean, 15, eight, maybe a lot of like five years it's been hurting me or 10 years or something. And uh, you put a piece of plastic in their mouth and uh, that held their jaw forward in a certain, certain position and this pain would go away in just a short period of time. I mean, you couldn't hardly believe it yourself. And the people really did appreciate that type of thing. Uh, now, let's see. Okay. I'm thinking I'm going the wrong direction there. All right. And here this lady's got nice teeth. All right, we put the lower ramp on. Here it is again with the, uh, the braces. And what we're going to do is put some tip in them and move them back. Or you can wear elastic. Sometimes they can wear, you, uh, normally if you're going to back up your lower teeth, you've got to come off with some class 3 elastics. Now, some of these people with real sore joints, they can't wear elastics. If you put them on there and say, now wear these 24 hours a day or all the time you're not uh, at home and whatever, you can wear these all the time and just, they can't do it. Now, some of them can wear these class 3 elastics during the daytime, but cannot at night when the jaw relaxes they'll shove the condyle back there into the retrodiscal tissue and they'll have pain with it. So that's what happens in these TMJ cases a lot of times. Okay, everything is going good. Now, <clears throat> if we wanted, we're coming out of this splint, say, and we want to go back on our natural teeth. Or right, you take the splint and you duplicate the upper portion of the splint, that ramp that holds the jaw in position right here. And it'll just be tied on with some clasp around the teeth back like here. Now you, once you get that and they wear it, and you can cut this part of the uh, splint off and they wear it if they want to uh, for a while. But then at, at some point in here, you've got to get these molars together and then you have to build something to go together here, this. Now, primarily you like for these to erupt together over a period of time, several weeks or a month or two, uh, where you're holding these teeth touching back here and this is touching up here in the front and these teeth will move together and come in contact and that's the way we did that on both sides and this gets more complicated as we go along here and i'm sure some of you dentists will look at this and say oh god i don't want to have a new thing with that so you'll do like most of the big majority of dentists don't treat the way they used to not treat it hardly at all but now people are wising up and they're beginning to do some good comprehensive treatment of the joint and also how you bring these teeth together by coming off the splint onto their braces again onto their teeth i'm sorry let me erase that 
All right, here's the ramp again from the bottom. And that begins to work out. And as long as we're keeping her jaw forward, even though she's got a lot of stress, it doesn't bother her much, or she can tolerate it. Now, if you are bad enough with the pain and the position they're keeping you in and your teeth have moved up where they're fitting together properly and it doesn't work for you and everything is good, then you've got a jaw joint problem that's quite severe and uh, it may have been in such bad shape that, that, that it would go. So anyway, we're back in the mouth now. There's that ramp we had a while ago that maybe belonged to come here. All right, we're okay. Now let's get on with this. Now there is our when we changed over. We had to put one of these in that was shallow that we could uh, go in and work on wear during the daytime and then we wore one of the deeper deal. I won't have to get my little button back up there again and that may be a little hard for me to find. There it is. Okay. Now we wore one of those little ramps during the daytime that you could talk with. At night we put a deep one on where you couldn't get behind it and we had these teeth right here covered up and we let these teeth erupt together. When these got to where they took pressure we began taking it off of here. So, and then uh, when it was holding good and we got the biting here and here we could take this off and let these teeth erupt together right in here and then eventually they would be chewing on all these teeth in this new jaw position that was where the jaw wanted to be now this gets to be complicated orthodontics but you can do it and that's the way we would go about doing that and we, I took a lot of pictures on this young lady just to show her case. Now, we've got it off over here, but this was what we had on those two bicuspids and a molar, six-year molar. And we let these teeth come together back out here. And when they were hitting, and you're hitting up here, all across here, and you hit here, so you're hitting here, here three places your jaw closes together and then you hold it there with that ramp right here and now these teeth erupt together and they will be in the correct position too and the person will quit having trouble now I sit and listen to a lot of people and uh, found out what's wrong with them or they show me what's wrong with them now that is the uh, end of these slides. I think that's the last slide we've got in here. But this slide right here, we let these teeth come together and this is hitting, this is hitting, and this is hitting. And then all, of, in other words, you're hitting here, here, and here. And that's three-legged and that's hold it up. Then you work on one side and you get them hitting. Now you can come over here and cut a groove down this plastic material and squeeze it together and it'll pop off of one side and then you've got to flip the other off. This triad doesn't stick on the teeth all that uh, terribly hard so you can get it off. And then when all of these teeth are meeting this way and you've got then you come in, when you take all this out, and we won't go in, you make an upper retainer with a ramp that they can't get behind with these teeth. And then you make another one that they wear during the daytime that lets the teeth come 
back in position, but they could bring their jaw back, but they were encouraged never to bring it back like that. So this is pretty well uh, what we will cover on a lot of these TMJ cases. And I've got some real raunchy cases like one uh, lady, uh, no doctor, Holt sent a lady in and it happened to be that she was a lady chiropractor who had perfect class one teeth. I mean, you couldn't have improved on them at all with anything we could do. Uh, she had had good uh, orthodontics done and her teeth just looked beautiful there. But she was hurting. So we had to advance her mandible but only about oh maybe one and a half millimeters to two two millimeters we advanced her mandible and with just that little bit of advancement that took the pressure off the retrodiscal tissue and it quit hurting and now he got her going comfortable and everything is doing fine so he sends her over to me and then now she has to take that thing and look at it and her teeth are fitting in a perfect class one relationship and I have to move her lower, her lower jaw about a millimeter and a half further forward and I oh god I, <laughs> I would mess this lady's teeth up but what we ended up doing was doing a very slight stripping of these teeth all the way back and we had closed this up some but we and we stripped the upper and the lower now we close these by going back these teeth all went back and closed and the ones up above they weren't watching it too much they went forward to close and uh, that makes a difference in it so anyway this is one lesson in what to do with the TMJ cases and how you come out of them but we're going to cover several more of these uh, videos on treating uh, adults and uh, men and women with this so I'm going to erase this and now I've got to go over here and stop this video some way or another and